Praise the Lord and welcome back to At The Master's Feet. Isn't this a glorious time in the Lord? You know, every time I think about what God is doing and how long we've been together, you know, it's nothing but the goodness of God. And we love having this opportunity to just share the word during this time. We're going to talk about today in service, the blessings of the favor of God. We're looking at the story of Daniel. Everybody's familiar with that in Daniel chapter one, where Daniel was, was, facing having to eat from the king's table. But you know what we talked about today? That there comes a time in the people of God's life where you just got to know how to draw the line. And once he did, once he stood on the word of God, once he stood on what he believed, because he said he was determined in his heart, God released the favor over those and upon those who had charge upon him. So take a listen. We pray that you're blessed, and I will see you right after the broadcast. Of all, bless his name. Hallelujah. God, you're worthy to be praised. God, you're worthy to be lifted up and adored. Hallelujah. As it was just decreed, Father, where would we be without you? Who are we without you, O oh God? So we acknowledge you as our king. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Our hearts are ready to praise. Our hearts are ready to give you glory. Hallelujah. Because we are the living word. So when we read that we enter in to bless you, when we enter in to give you glory, God, that's what we're ready to do. Hallelujah. We are living epistles. We are read of men, Lord God. Hallelujah. So when they read us, Father, let them read us, Lord God, and understand that your word is coming alive. It's coming alive. It's coming alive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In this season, Father, let us be the living epistles that you have called us to be. Let us be those, Lord God, who keep your praise up on our lips, Father. Let us be those, Lord God, hallelujah, who honor you and give you glory because you're worthy to be praised. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Our hands are lifted in your presence now, Father, because we understand that you're worthy. Yeah, glory. Hallelujah. You're worthy. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. If you had not been slain, God, we'd have no life. So thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, that you became our sacrifice. You became, Lord God, hallelujah, the lamb ha, that would take away the sins of the world. So we thank you. We thank you this morning. We bless you this morning. We give you honor this morning. Hallelujah. No honor to another man or to another thing, Lord God. We worship you. You are the true and living God. Thank you for who you are. And God, we thank you, hallelujah, that you are with us. We thank you that you are present. Holy Spirit, as we see it, as we sense you now among us, ah, glory. We yield ourselves to you. We yield ourselves now. We yield our minds, we yield our hearts, Lord God. Our hearts are ready to receive what you have for us. We're not going to reject or turn anything away, Lord God, that you're breathing into us today. Because you are breathing new life. Yes, you are. You are resuscitating us now by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. So we thank you for resurrection power. Hey, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Every dead thing comes alive now in the name of Jesus. Everybody under the sound of my voice. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God. I thank, now, I thank you now, Father. They thought that it was over. Rigor mortis had already set in. But God, thank you. Hallelujah. We say the dead will live in the name of Jesus. We're calling Lazarus. We're calling John's. We're calling Mary. We're calling everybody to come forth. Come forth, come forth this morning. Pull off your grave clothes, hallelujah. You've been in depression long enough. 
long enough, long enough. We're breathing the resurrection power of God. The Holy Ghost is breathing upon us, and we're breathing upon you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Our minds right now. Oh, God, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Our minds are being quickened now in the mighty name of Jesus. We're girding up the loins of our mind, and we're thinking on you, Lord God. We're thinking thoughts of you right now. We're pushing back everything that's tried to crowd and overshadow our minds to convince us, Lord God, that you don't exist, that you're not real, that you're not concerned about what's going on among your people. But we're pushing that back now, Lord God, and we receive the engrafted word of God, hallelujah, upon our minds now in the name of Jesus. And we think thoughts that are pure, that are holy, that are of good report. We think on these things because you're a good God. You're a good dad. Hallelujah. We serve a good father. <laughs> He's a good daddy. Hallelujah. And he cares for his children. You can climb into his lap this morning. Hallelujah. Hear the heartbeat of your Savior. Thank you for the rhythm, Lord God, that we walk with you, that we can talk with you. Hallelujah. We can become lost in you. That's what we need. We just want to get lost in you, Lord God. So we thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. Thank you for your presence. There's nothing to be compared unto your presence, Lord God. It's nothing like the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. So I just want to admonish you for the next few minutes. Even if you got to close your eyes, just shut it all out. Holy Spirit, bring us in. In the name of Jesus, bring us into this place, Lord, where you've prepared a table before us. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Where we can eat until we're satisfied. Where we can eat until the full, Lord God. Where we can drink of you. And we'll never hunger again. Nor will we ever thirst again. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, you are our help this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit, you're our advocate this morning. Thank you that we are not by ourselves. Thank you, Father, that you did not leave us comfortless. You came for us, hallelujah. As a mighty Russian wind, you came, hallelujah, and you invaded the earth, and you have invaded our hearts. So we thank you, Holy Spirit. We honor you today. Woo! Glory, glory, glory. I feel the wind of the feel the wind of God. Just let him blow, let him blow, let him blow. Hallelujah. Since the winds of the spirit this morning that'll bring a refreshing to your soul. A refreshing to your spirit, a refreshing even to your flesh, man. We receive you now. We receive you. We receive you. We receive you. Receive you. And we honor you. And we honor you. And we honor you. We honor you as our king. Hallelujah. We honor you as our king. We honor you as our king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Turn to Psalms 24 with me before we even get into the word. I want to read this. Psalms 24. Our hearts are ready. And we're ready to receive of you, God. Psalms 24. I'm going to read all of it. And it says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, 
He has founded it, the earth, upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? David is asking a question. Then he gives you the prerequisite. He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from God of his, from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek your face, O Jacob, or the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be ye lift up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory, he's our king of glory, shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Selah. Think about that. In the Message Bible, it reads like this. I'm going to start at verse 8. It says, who is this king glory? God armed and battle ready. Then it says this in verse 9 and 10. Wake up, you sleepyhead city. Wake up, you sleepyhead people. King Glory is ready to enter, my God. Who is this King Glory? God of the angel armies. He is the King of Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say it's time that the city awakens. It's time that the people of God awaken. Somebody say, somebody shout and say, wake up, Little Rock. rock. Somebody say, wake up, people of God. Hallelujah. The king of glory is ready to come in. He's ready to come in. Hallelujah. This is his invitation. Well, God don't need, a, don't need us to lift up gates to come in. Listen, this is an invitation that says we want you. Hallelujah. We desire you. We need you. So wake up. Hallelujah. King glory is ready to come in. Hallelujah. Swing open your doors. Swing open your heart. Let him in. Let him in. Somebody say, come in, come in, come in, come in. Hallelujah. Tell him, I've opened the doors. Come in. Hallelujah. Enter into my situation. Enter in where I live. Enter in into my home. Enter in where my children abide. Enter in this city, oh God. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Woo! I said King Glory is ready to come in. Somebody need to be real excited. Hallelujah. Somebody need to be real excited. See, if they call you and told you some celebrity, or you know the president is on his way, you know we'll start moving stuff. Well, get the chair ready. Get this ready. Do we need a different seat? What do we need to do? Do we need to put out? Listen, King Glory. Hey, Jesus. King of the entire universe. He wants to come in this morning. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The mere fact that he wants to come in to mere people. My God, that's a blessing within itself. We're talking about the creator of the entire universe. He wants to come in to us. Hey, glory. So wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Open your doors. Let him in. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God and tell him, come in. Come in. Come in. Hallelujah. Now shout about it. Shout a real shout, people. Hallelujah. Wake up, sleepy-headed people. My God, the king of glory wants to come in. Jesus, thank you, Lord God. Nobody's going anywhere. They're not welcome. I'm not. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not welcome. Hallelujah. But, Father, we want you to know that you are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome here. You're welcome in our hearts. You're welcome in our homes. You're welcome in our situations, Lord God, on our jobs, wherever we go, Father. You are welcome. 
a distinguished guest. Hallelujah. Not just a guest. We need you to just move in, Father. Hallelujah. As a resident. Ha! Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And those of you who don't know him, that's what you need to be saying this morning. Come into my heart. Hallelujah. Come into my heart. I'm inviting you in. Amen. Hallelujah. It's very simple. All you have to do is invite him in. Confess your faults. Confess your sins. I'm a sinner, but I need a savior. Come in. Save me. Set me free. Let me experience this life I hear people talking about. Because only he can give it. Hallelujah. Save me. Deliver me and set me free. I receive, I believe you're the son of God. I believe you were raised from the dead on the third day. I believe you are alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Come in. Be my Lord and my Savior. I accept you now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise God. Hallelujah. Let's praise God for the people of God. Hallelujah. Nothing happens when you're asleep. You got to wake up. Hallelujah. I read an article once, and it says this is happening to people when they're asleep. That That is the closest to death that you get. Your heart rate slows way, way, way down. Body temperature cools, and you go into a form of sleep. That's why we need sleep, because it allows us rest. Hallelujah. But I don't know nothing when I'm asleep. I don't know anything. Don't want to know nothing because I'm asleep. Amen. But when it's time to wake up, I can't get anything done if I still want to stay asleep. So we have to learn how to wake up in this season. Amen. We got to learn how to pursue the things of God. We can't stay where we are. Amen. I don't want to stay in a place I've been in become stagnated. Amen. And just in a place where I know there's no, I'm not producing anything and nothing is happening. I'm not moving in the rhythm of God or obeying God and walking in what God has called me to be. That's a very uncomfortable position for me. And it needs to be for everybody. If it's not, then you've gotten complacent in that place. And we need you to just wake up this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, it's still in my spirit, so I'm going to go with it until it leaves. Wake up. Wake up. If you've been sleeping here, it's time to wake up. Amen. It's time to get up. It's time to rise up in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. God has need of us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can't do anything asleep. So we thank you, Father. Hallelujah. That you are the one who have revived us again in Jesus' name. Amen. God is so good. My God. I mean, sometimes those words are just not enough to talk about the goodness of our God. He is just awesome in all of his ways. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's get ready to go to the word. Now, we're getting ready, and I'll talk about this a little bit more at the end. We're getting ready to start a fast this Thursday on the 8th. Amen. And we'll talk about all of that uh, once I finish, but we're ready. Let's ready ourselves. Amen. I mean, we've done this long enough. We know we, 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 we know how to engage in this. Amen. We know how to be diligent. We know how not to whine. We know how, look, okay, it's just for a few days. It's just for a few hours during the day. We can do this. Amen. We can do this, and we're going to do it, and we're going to do it. We're going to be tenacious about it. We're going to have our things written down, and we're going to believe God. Amen. Hallelujah. We're not going to be ruled by our stomachs or anything else. The Bible, Jesus told his disciples, not if you fast, but when you fast. So, yeah, fasting is still for today. We're going to turn our plates down. We're going to first take some stuff off of them. Amen. And then we're going to fast as the Holy Spirit has directed us. So what I want to do today is I want to go to the book of Daniel. And I want to read in the book of Daniel the blessings of God's favor.
So we're going to read several scriptures today. So let's begin. We're going to begin with Daniel 1. I'm going to start in the third verse and uh, read to the 20th verse. Amen. So let's follow along with this. Amen. Let's get excited about what God is doing. Praise God. Hallelujah. There needs to be anticipation. I'm anticipating. I'm expecting. God to do something at the end of this fast. Praise God. Amen. Daniel chapter 1, beginning with verse 3. And the Babylonian king told Asphanaz, the master of the eunuchs, to bring in some of the children of Israel, both of the royal family and of nobility, youth without blemish, well-favored in appearance and skillful in all wisdom, discernment and understanding, apt in learning knowledge, competent to stand and serve in the king's palace, and to teach them the literature and language of the Chaldeans. And the king assigned for them a daily portion of his own rich and dainty food and of the wine which he drank. They were to be so educated, so nourished for three years that at the end of that time, they might, they might stand before the king. Among these were of the children of Judah, Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief of the eunuchs gave them names. Daniel he called Belshazzar, the king's attendant. Hananiah he called Shadrach. Mishael he called Meshach. And Azariah he called Abednego. But Daniel determined in his heart that he would not defile himself by eating his portion, the king's rich and dainty food, or by drinking the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might be allowed not to defile himself. Now, God made Daniel to find favor, compassion, and loving kindness with the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear lest my lord the king, who has appointed your food and drink, should see your face as worse looking or more sad than the other youth of your age. Then you would endanger my head with the king. In other words, he could die. Then said Daniel to the steward, <clears throat> whom the chief of the eunuchs set, had set over Daniel, Hannah and I, Mishael, and Azariah, prove your servants, I beseech you, for ten days. Let us be given a vegetable diet of water to dr and water to drink. Let our appearance and the appearance of the youth who eat at the king's table, rich dainties, be observed and compared by us. And deal with us, your servants, according to what you see. So the man consented to, to them in this matter and proved them ten days. And at the end of ten days, it was seen that they were looking better and had taken on more flesh than all of the youth who ate at the king's rich eight of the king's rich dainties. So the steward took away their rich dainties and the wine they, that were, they were to drink and gave them vegetables. As for the four youth, four youth, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. Daniel had understanding in all kinds of visions and dreams. Now at the end of the time which the king had set for bringing all the young men in, the chief of the eunuchs brought them before Nebuchadnezzar and the king conversed with them, and among them all, among them all, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore, they were assigned to stand before the king. Amen. Praise the Lord. They were assigned to stand before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding concerning which the king asked them, he found them. Ten times better. Somebody say ten times better. Then all the, the learned music, magicians, enchanters who were in the whole realm. Hallelujah. So we're talking about, we're taking ten days, amen. We're taking ten days to exalted favor or for the favor of God to be released, amen. Because one thing we know that these young men were all, they already were in the favor of God. But we're going to just take a look at how the favor of God is continued to be released when we do what we know is right in the eyesight of God. I was going to entitle this message, Finding Favor with God, but you know, I don't really know if we find favor with God or God's favor finds us. Because the more you look at it and the more you read it, it's as if favor found me. Amen. Either way, it's fine. Praise the Lord. In either way, I've got the favor of God operating in my life. Amen. And favor is not something I can lay hands on you and you can just receive. 
Favor is something that God blesses and releases unto us. Amen. Now, do we all walk in favor? Uh, is it for everyone? I believe that it is. I believe that the favor of God is for everyone. I think we all have the opportunity to walk in and receive the favor of God. But I also believe that our actions and our choices, amen, have bearing on whether or not we receive God's favor. Listen to what the scripture says in Isaiah 66 and 2. This is what the scripture says. It says, these are the ones I look on with favor. Those who are humble, contrite in spirit, and who tremble at my word. It is God's will. I believe it's God. You know it is. God has no respect to a person. So it is the will of God that we all receive his favor, that we all receive his blessing. But God is sovereign. And in his omnipotent wisdom, knowledge, he knows that everyone are not going to align themselves to receive of God. That's not God's doing. This is our choices that we make. Amen. I found this as I was studying. This was something that I read. It says, God's favor is not a feeling. It's not something we can earn. It's not something that you know you can clock in and out like you're going on a job. You know, when you come in, you clock in. Well, okay, I've clocked in now, Lord. Now, give me my favor. No, 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 no. No, it does not work like that. So it, what we have to understand is it is a gift and a blessing from God, even when we don't ask for it. Hallelujah. Ooh, I like that. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So let's go ahead and start because I, I, this is, I'm pretty sure it's going to be two parts. But let's go ahead and look into the scripture. Let's take hey a look. Amen. Welcome back. Welcome back. Did that message bless you? Listen, it blessed me. It just let me know, let me know uh, rather, just how good God is. And it's his desire. It is what he wants to do to take care of his children. Amen. He wants us all to walk in his favor. But unfortunately, because of our actions, because of our choices, we won't get the opportunity to do that. So as I said before the broadcast, learn to draw the line when it comes to obeying God and watch the favor of God be released upon your life. Listen, we thank you so much for being with us almost two years or over two years, amen. We just appreciate God for you. If you need us, you know what to do. Just give us a call, 501-773-1400, and we will stand in agreement with you in whatever it is you need us to do. We love you in the Lord. We will see you next week at the Master Speed. Be blessed. Thank you for joining our program at the Master Speed with Pastor Regina Moore. Soul Gathering Ministries is located at 7600 South University Avenue in Little Rock, Arkansas. For more information, call 501-773-1400 or go to soulgatheringministries.org. You may also email us at soulgatheringministries at yahoo.com. Join us next week for another inspiring word from Pastor Regina Moore.